Hey everyone, uh, my name is Tim Drake. I'm an associate professor at NC State University and I wanna present out our leadership dashboard to you. But before I do, I want to give you a little context for our leadership tracking system. We work with three major district partners on our Wallace Grant. We worked with Wake County Public Schools, which is one of the largest school systems in the country. Uh, we worked with Johnston County Public Schools, which is just south uh, east of Wake County and is more of a rural district with about 48 schools. And then we had the Northeastern Consortium of 13 rural districts in the northeastern part of our state. So when we brought our partners together to think about a leadership tracking system and to brainstorm how we might need to meet the needs of these various partners, we found that their needs were very different in some ways, but that there were common variables or common things that they wanted to see across the system. But in thinking about how to scale that up and then how to do that sustainably, we realized pretty quickly working with our district partner, uh, the Department of Public Instruction, excuse me, our state partner, that um, we could create a statewide system that would meet the needs of all of our different partners. So that was our design challenge. And this is going to be one of the solutions we came up with with our leadership dashboard. So I'll introduce that to you now. Our leadership dashboard lives within a platform called EVOS, which is it's a value added model, but it's also the system that our educators use in the state to look at reports on student performance and student growth. Um, so you can see there are school level reports, district reports, teacher, student reports, there's comparison reports. And then under this final tab, human capital, this leadership dashboard, this is where our leadership tracking system lives. Okay, so every educator in the state has access to this dashboard here. Now, the one I'm showing you today is a dummy account. So everything's fictional. Uh, the, the names are scrambled, uh, but it's based on real data that's being used in our state. And we invite you to reach out to us and we'll be able to give you demos of the actual system uh, at another time. So what we have here is notice that in the, in the center here, we have a series of, or up across the top here, we have a series of filters that can be used by uh, an individual learning, wanting to learn from the system. So as we filter by these variables down below this educators will update and populate based on those filters. And we can have a soft match, which means that if any of these filters are true, uh, they, the educators will populate below, or we can have a strict match, which is I want to, I'm looking for a very specific individual with certain characteristics, and then the, that those educators will populate with only a full match. For now, for the demo purposes, I'm just going to use the soft match filter so you can see how it works uh, and get a sense. So we start uh, within the data set with 10,557 educators that are in the system. So our statewide system, that would be a, a larger number, but this is that demo site. And so for the role we could click on and understand that the, the current role that that individual has, um, let's say I'm interested in just looking at assistant principals and principals because I need to make a new hire in one of the schools in my district and I'm looking for a particular type of principal or AP that has a certain set of characteristics. So I select those two and hit apply. And you can see that now we are down to just 666 educators in this, in, in this uh, platform that match uh, being an AP or a principal. I can then select license and I have various variables that I can look at in terms of the licenses and credentials that these educators hold. So I could go by license category here. I could go by license grade span. I can actually go by actual names here. I can search and select. There are program codes here and I can go by if I want a STEM license. So just because I'm on it now, I'm just, let's say I'm interested in, uh, an, I have an early college that has a STEM focus and I'm looking for a new principal there. So I wanna find an AP or principal that has a STEM license. So I'm gonna apply that. And we can see of the total population of educators, 16% have a STEM affiliated license. And so that number has grown now to reflect teachers or educators that are assistant principals or principals with that STEM license for a full match. If I were to go deeper into the system, so if I were to go to number 47, notice this is just a 50% match. This is somebody with, uh, that is currently a teacher with that license. So they populate, but there it filters by the match. Okay, when I click on the education tab, we can see that there are different degree types from advanced bachelor, doctorate, uh, master's of school administration or master's in our state. Folks need an MSA, so that might be something that I would filter by. And I can also look up specific principal preparation programs. So in our live data set, you would see North Carolina State University as being one of those, for example. So maybe I, was, I would be interested in looking for a particular program. Um, so I could select that as well. For now, I'll just select this MSA tab and hit apply. And then we can see there's a 7% match across that. Years experience is a categorical variable. You can see uh, from zero to five years, six to 10, 11 to 20 or over 20 years. So let's say I want some principals with more than five years experience. So I might apply that filter and we can see uh, that 76% of the educators have more than five years of experience. 
Now the performance tab is a unique one. The minute I click on that performance tab, given the permissions that I have, it will now filter down to that. So uh, notice here it says applying the performance filter might restrict the list of educators to the district or school level. If you're state level employee, you have access to everyone. But if you are in a district, you would now only have access to the evaluations of the principals or the APs in your district. And that's based on the laws here in North Carolina. So by selecting this and by selecting effective or highly effective, let's say that I want their evaluations to have been good, at least effective, and applying that filter, I am now limited notice to my school district. And this is a rural county school district. And my number of educators goes down. Okay. So notice as well that I no longer have a full match, but I can see which one of these does populate. So I can see that I'm missing that MSA, but I do have a principal here with 11 to 20 years of experience. They got an effective or highly effective on their, uh, on their performance, and they do have a STEM license. So that's how that filtering's worked, but they are missing that MSA that I selected for education. Okay, the final category here is that we can search by the types of schools that they're working in. So the school demographics, I can toggle these and say, well, what if I only wanted uh, educators, principals, or APs that are working in an environment with greater than 50%, maybe I'll go 52% economic disadvantage, um, maybe a greater than, I know that the school has a higher population of ELL, so maybe above 10%. Uh, let's say that it also has a set of uh, minority students is high, so I want percent minority to be high as well, and I could think about special education too. So these are some of the filters here. There's school designation in terms of the type of school, the school program type, if it was a magnet, early college, and others, the region, uh, again, across the state. Now, this will be limited uh, based on your district at this point, um, and the school type, and finally, the school urbanicity, and these have these drop downs as well. So I can apply filters there. Now, for this demo side, I've noticed that a lot of those school characteristics are just 100%. Um, so that's why everyone matches here. Um, but in the live data set, it would filter down based on those parameters that I've given it. So now we've come down to uh, 78 or so educators that at least have uh, a, a match that fits within my district, given the criteria that I've outlined. And if I just pick, let's say, this first ed, uh, principle that I've here, when I click on view history, I now get a deeper dive into their specific background. So I can see, and, and these years again are for the dummy site wrong, but these would be the years in which they receive things. But I can see the role that they're currently in. They're a principal of Rough Primary School in this rural county school district. I can see the licenses that they hold. I can expand the license history to see where and uh, when they receive those licenses. I can collapse that back down. Uh, sorry, when they receive those licenses. For the education, I can see where they received their degrees. Uh, master's and a bachelor's degrees, both from South Lake Harbor University. I can collapse that back down. And then I can see their performance history as well over time. Now, again, these years are in the future, far future, uh, but they're just showing examples of what that might be like uh, 2018, 2019, for example. And you can see their evaluation uh, history, their performance history. All right. And those would be ordered uh, chronologically. So then I could decide that that might be the uh, individual that I'm interested, or maybe it's these first few that I'm doing a deeper dive on to then invite out for an interview or to at least uh, pull their resumes and find other information. So these are the variables that our leadership dashboard selects on. These are some of the tools and the ways in which we're able to filter uh, of those variables to find uh, teachers or principals or assistant principals that we might need. Um, and uh, for those programs like myself, for EPPs, this is kind of the district facing version. For the education prep providers, it's a very similar setup, except there's no performance information. And um, you, you can filter down by principal prep program, obviously, is something that we're interested in. And you can filter by cohort and year and graduation year. So for your ed prep program providers, your partners in, in the work, there's also a EPP facing dashboard that um, we use to help understand how our graduates are doing. So please reach out again with any questions. We hope this demo was helpful.